continuing on with my series for the mature beginner and today we're going to be talking about powder. Do you need powder? Not everybody does you guys but we're also going to talk about what kind of powders there are and what powders can do for you and what the function of powders are. And we're also going to talk a little bit about tools, what to apply powder with because it can be confusing. As I've said in earlier videos, if you have worn makeup for many years and then stopped for many years and you're getting back into it, you may be overwhelmed with the new choices that we have. Beauty blenders, that is kind of a new thing. But we can still use powder puffs, we can still use brushes and how to use these things. But first let's start with powder. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that powder can be used for one of three things. You can see I'm a little bit shiny today, although my foundation is set. Powder cuts shine, and that's how I use it. Powder also helps with longevity, so if you have oily skin, or if you have skin that just eats makeup up, your foundation disappears. Even though your skin isn't oily, powder can help with fat. And powder can, of course, help with longevity, whether you have oily skin or not. If you can get eight hours out of your foundation, but you really need 10, powder can help you do that. And there's several different kinds of powders, you guys. There is powder that is for setting your makeup. So you do your foundation and you set, and then you go on with your powder products, like powder blush, powder bronzer. There's also finishing powder, and finishing powder can help polish your skin and give it a certain kind of finish. It's maybe something a little bit radiant, maybe a little bit pearlized, or maybe something quite matte. And when do you powder? It depends. You can put on your foundation, do a cream product, and then do some powder, and then do the rest of your powders, your powder blush, your powder bronzer. And then you could, if you wanted to, do a finishing powder on top of that. Here in the world of YouTube, I've seen so many people put on both kinds of powders, and it took a little while for me to realize, I realized it years ago, of course, that I was watching women who were younger and who could put on a lot of powder, but powder can look very drying on the skin. And if you have a wet foundation and a powder, you can get some really icky looking creasy stuff right through here or around your lines and wrinkles. So we want to be careful with what we choose, when we powder, and how we powder, and why are we powdering. Again, you may not need powder. And if you're about my age, I find that women around my age at one point in time use Bare Minerals as a foundation. And so they're very comfortable with a foundation that is a powder or with using foundation powder to powder their face. It might be time to rethink that. This series asks a lot of you to rethink what you think you know and try something else. If you are new to the channel, hey, my name's Kiki and I'm 61 years old and I love makeup. And I used to wear makeup and I kind of wore the same thing every day and then I slowly peeled it away. My favorite foundation was discontinued so I wasn't doing that. But I was doing a lip and an eye and a blush. And then I started to get more and more red as I got older so I really didn't need the blush so much. And I just did a little bit of liner and maybe some mascara and before you know it, wear nothing. Now I'm back to makeup and I'm wearing it more than ever and having fun with it more than ever and learning as I go along and I just want to share with this series what I'm learning with you. Maybe it will be a jumping off point for you to figure out how to wear makeup for your face. Now I am a little bit shiny and this is my favorite powder. If you've been here you know it. It is the By Terry. Hydra Hyaluronic Powder, and it is completely clear. Take some off in here, and I love this Wayne Goss brush. It's no longer being made. I don't think Wayne Goss makes brushes anymore, but I just pick up the teeniest bit, and I just want to get rid of the shine. I'm not too shiny today, but a little bit. And then I'll turn it on its side and make sure there are no edges because I'm not powdering the entire face. I don't like shine right here on the cheeks. I think it emphasizes um, 
these little lines here, which I can't remember. I know what they're called, but I can't pronounce it, so I don't even try. And that's it. I don't need much today. I'm going to take this and take the tip and pick up a little bit more. Less is more with powder. And do under my eyes just to set everything up. And also, because I'm troughing, I kind of want to blend that a little bit. Because I have puffy under eyes, I don't want sheen under my eyes because that makes it look even worse. But if you have hollow under eyes, you may not want to mattify. If you find that your concealer works just fine and stays all day, doesn't move around, doesn't get into lines and wrinkles, you may want something radiant. And if you have dark, hollow under eyes, you may want to use a powder that leaves a radiant finish, where this one is a little bit more mattifying, but it's not terribly mattifying. As you see, there's still a lot, a little bit of sheen on my cheeks, and it's offering me a skin-like finish. This is my number one powder, and I use it every single day, and yet, this will last me two to three years. I just got this one maybe three months ago, and the one I had before that, I think it was three years. I can't recommend a replacement for this brush, but I just want to talk about the shape. It's about the size of my eye, so it's a small brush. And Lisa Eldridge always uses a small brush. In fact, I think she uses a Sukiu eyeshadow brush for powdering because she also doesn't believe in powdering all over the face, just where the powder is needed. What is it needed for? Again, shine, longevity. Longevity you powder all over, or setting. Now the ferrule is pinched, so it's a rather flat, but not terribly flat brush. Look at all that powder coming out. And it's a fantastic size. I love this brush. But you might also want to look at Sukiu, a big eyeshadow brush. The Sukus are very, very soft. You want something that is not too rough on the skin. So goat for powdering, I don't like that. Now from time to time, I might use too much foundation or the combination of my foundation with my sunscreen just isn't working and I feel either super shiny, like I've dipped my head in bobbing for apples, except it's oil instead of water, or I feel like I'm never going to set. And I have been known to take a beauty blender and dip it in and roll powder where it's like a puddle on my face. The beauty blender should be a little bit damp, but when I say a little bit damp, I mean you get it damp, you squeeze it out with a towel, and you wait 15 or 20 minutes if it's hot outside, and even longer. Oftentimes, when I'm washing my face, that's when I'll get my beauty blender wet, even though I won't be putting on my makeup for maybe a half an hour. I'm washing my face, doing my skincare, then my sunscreen, waiting for my sunscreen to settle in, and then the beauty blender is just about the right place to start using. And another tool that I use is this. This is a fluffy brush from BK Beauty. It's the 201 brush. It's slightly pinched, or maybe you would say it's oval in the ferrule, and it's very light. It is synthetic, but it's very soft. With a brush like this, I would dot on my powder, like yay, because I don't want to displace anything. And it's only once it's all dotted on that I'll use it this way, and just brush off excess. So I'm not gonna put on too many powders today, <laughs> but I already have one, and I think we're going to do at least one more, and we're going to talk about two more powder tools as well. This is something I should probably throw away. This is the Hourglass, and it was so interesting because you tip it like yay, tip it back, and that is the dose of powder for your skin. However, there is a little bit of color to this, and the reason I don't like that is it can change the color of what I'm doing. So it's right here, and you can see that there's a little bit of radiance, which is lovely, but it is a little bit light. I might pull to this if I'm wearing a foundation that is a touch too dark for me, and that's another fantastic way you can use powders. I have pink powder and I have purple powder, and I find that if I have a foundation that is a little too warm for me, I can use a pink powder, and it will take the edge off of the warmth. You don't want to use a lot. 
but a little bit will help your foundation. Same thing, if I have a foundation that's a bit too dark for me, I could go in with this if I want something radiant. However, I love the Kosas powder. I haven't used the Hourglass in a very long time. It's actually been stored somewhere else, and I just took it out for this video. So I can't say, do I love this? Do I recommend it? I'm going to start using it again, and then we'll come to some conclusions. But this I use a lot. This is the Kosas Cloud Set. It is colored. So they have different colors. This one's too light. The next deepest is too warm. It's very yellow. So I stick with this one, but I can only use it certain times of year. And what's really interesting about this, I'm going to put a teeny bit on. I think I'll put some on this cheek and some on this, is that this fills out your pores like nobody's business. put a little bit under my eye too, but I don't really love this under the eye. I'm going to pull in now and you can see the difference between this cheek with a teeny bit of the Kosas to this cheek. Since I have the dose for Hourglass, I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to put the teeniest bit here and see what happens. This is also actually really, really pretty on the skin, but it is a little bit more radiant. And now, this side to this side. The radiance isn't a sheen necessarily like skin that is unpowdered. It's not like a Charlotte Tilbury product, you know what I mean? But it has a skin-like kind of radiance to it. Used, I think, I'm going to say, used the right amount, this can be beautiful. And of course, Hourglass does make insanely beautiful powders. Puff. Remember the puffs? Remember when powder came with puffs? You can buy these on Amazon. I'll link them below. But if you are having that oil slick moment that I talked about earlier, where you might take the beauty blender and dip it into powder and just go to town, you can also do this. And this is a lovely way to go. But again, you're getting so much more powder on your face when you use a tool like this. I wouldn't really recommend it on a daily basis, but fully appropriate in some conditions. And if you're oily, that might be one of the conditions. So this is the Kosas, and this is the Hourglass. And this is the Puff. And the Puff is so incredibly useful, so I don't have much powder left on. I'm gonna put some in this eye for getting this area right here of the eye. And it's almost like powdering with your finger because I can move my little puffiness up a little bit and get that powder in the trough, which will help that trough. Again, if you're older, you really want to do this with a light, light hand. Now, I have a box of powders right here. <laughs> and I'm gonna go through all of these and we're going to talk about some other things. This is something from Chantecaille. This is a powder from Chantecai that almost looks like a highlighter. And I'm going to turn it around and you might see the reflection on this. I think you could use this as a nice little highlighter, but again, it has a reflective finish. You could use it as a finishing powder. And I can't even see the color on my hand, so this is a good color. This powder from Charlotte Tilbury, if you have pores to fill, it's going to do it for you. It looks like this is one of her earlier products. There are waxes in this, and that's why it fills up your pores. If you have texture on your skin, it's not going to work like a putty primer, for instance, but it's going to be so, so helpful in diminishing any texture or pores that you have on your skin. I'm going to pick up my brush again and put this on my forehead. This one also imparts color. I'm going to take this fluffy brush. You can use this with something like this. You can also do this with loose. Definitely want to coat very well, go round and round and round, and then take off excess and get your powder into the brush. So the powder's not like a spoon, you know? It's not carrying it and putting it on your face. It's being worked into the brush, and I'm just going to pat and it will have a very minimal effect in this way, which is kind of good, since I'm not sure this color is going to work for me. But I could also go on with something loose, and then I would 
go this way to make sure there's no excess. And I'm using a very light hand because I don't want to displace my foundation. So this one, highly, highly recommend. It's beautiful on the skin, makes you poreless, does come in colors. If you have textured skin, I think you'll really like this. Give it a try. I don't like that, however, under the eyes. Now, the Givenchy powder that everybody is crazy about these days, I've had it for years, but I have it in this, there's lavender and purple and blue and white. And I thought that this might help with the redness on my cheeks to help diffuse it a little bit. So I'm just going to disperse it. I don't use this very often. I don't know if I've ever even used it on camera. Here's your little puff. And I just dispersed a little bit. I find these are kind of weird because you don't want to go on with all these colors on your face. Don't you want to mix the colors first? And that's what it looks like. I am going to mix it first. I'll just put it in the cap like this. And some came out as well. And I'm going to go in this brush again because I can't find my other brush. And tap, tap, tap. Take out what's there. And then work it into the brush. Swirl it around in this cap so the colors are distributed. This is a very light color. So for me, it might be a little bit too light right now. But the idea, I was thinking, if I could do it right here, I think it might help with my redness. But I'm not sure that it does. Might as well put a little bit more on. Why not? Pounce, pounce, pounce. I don't know that I can emphasize to you enough how little powder I'm actually using. And I think that's incredibly key. So that was the Givenchy, and this is the Galan Meteorites, a very famous product, been around for a long, long time. They have holiday specials, and I have heard that those have more radiance, even maybe a shimmery quality. These smell, first of all, like violets. There's a little sponge, so I can tell from the sponge, because it comes white, that this has a pinkish kind of cast to it. And here are the beads. There's a lot of powder in there. You might be able to see. You shake it up, which breaks up the beads just a little bit. And then I take this buffing brush from Sonia G, and I cannot read it, but I'll post it down below. And I'm going to dip in and pick up some of that powder. And as always, I want to get the brush evenly coated, shake off, and do a little dotting before I start blending. This also imparts a little bit of color. Now I didn't really powder this side of the face. This is your finishing powder, and as such, it has to be on face that's already been set. You don't want any pulling. And this brush works best on flat planes, right? So on the cheeks, it's a little harder. But you could do it on the forehead. I'm just going to show you this side of my face to this side of my face. It really does something special for the skin. And I'm going to do the same thing for the forehead, just a little dotting, and then some buffing. And do you see that beautiful sheen on my forehead? It's so, so skin-like, and it's added a little bit of pink into my life. I found my powder brush. <laughs> Thank you. And I was looking around, and I thought, you know what? Let's just powder the nose the teeniest bit. And for me, only the teeniest bit over the lip, but a shiny lip does make you look like you're sweating. So you want to take care of that. And while we're talking about sweating, never apply, ever, <laughs> apply powder when you're sweating. In fact, don't apply makeup when you're sweating. If you can help it, don't do it. It makes a terrible, muddy mess. And now I am ready, you guys, to just go on with a little bit of blush or a little bit of bronzer. And let me do that, and I'll be right back. And that's it, you guys. You know what? I just did a teeny bit of bronzer, a teeny bit of blush, 
and a red lip and I'm leaving it so so simple because I think my skin looks so so pretty and I was wearing foundation you know but I think you can see I hope all the things that you can do with powders I changed the color of my tint I was using a mix today of the Chanel in the B20 or no the 30 which is a little too warm and this product from Jane Airedale that is not being made anymore but I still love the way it looks but it's too light but it is neutral so they're both similar products and I mix them together and I felt I was still a little too warm and now I don't and that was from the Guerlain and I don't have any shine but the skin looks very skin like and powder can do a lot for you you just have to figure out what kind of powder you need how much you need on a daily basis if you need powder if you need to fill pores if you need to color correct if you're looking for setting or if you're looking for a beautiful finish and that's going to wrap it up i really hope it was helpful to you and i hope you come back again until we meet again be safe and smart and let me check my teeth phew <laughs> and i'm wishing you good health